Since SpaceX successfully landed a Falcon 9 rocket first stage on a boat eight years ago, they realized that their bright spacefaring future was unlocked. Indeed, the image of the Falcon 9 booster landing on a drone ship is very familiar to us today. This contributes to helping SpaceX lead in the number of rocket reuses and global coverage of satellites in low Earth orbit. Therefore, SpaceX hopes that one day the same miracle will happen with Starship as they plan to land rocket boosters offshore in the future. But should they do that? We know that good things take time. Prior to SpaceX reaping its first success by recovering a Falcon 9 first stage at sea using a drone ship on April 8, 2016, the company had suffered a rocky period. In the video, How Not to Land an Orbital Rocket Booster on the company's YouTube channel, we can see clearly many Falcon 9's first stages heroically sacrificed in the floating platforms offshore. Not only that, trying this new method also got the company embroiled in a lawsuit with one of its arch rivals, Blue Origin. Blue Origin filed a patent for the concept of landing a rocket on a barge in 2010, and it was granted in 2014. This means SpaceX would have to pay Bezos' company to use a drone ship. Musk didn't agree since drone ships are key to SpaceX's plans to reuse boosters. At that point, the SpaceX team argued that if Blue Origin were to own their patent over the drone ship, other companies would have to pay for it. According to SpaceX, the drone ship technology has been there for years, and the science behind it is old hat. SpaceX won their petition, which meant that BO had to withdraw the patent claim. But there is a big difference between thinking and doing. Since acquiring its patent, Blue Origin has yet to launch an orbital rocket, let alone land one. By contrast, since its first successful landing on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, SpaceX has safely returned a lot of Falcon 9 rockets at sea. This marks the new era of ocean-based landings as well as reusing rockets. Nowadays, both of them are gradually being considered essential parts of the commercial aerospace industry. So, is the first success a motivation for SpaceX to go further by landing Starship offshore? Yes, sure. In 2020, the company bought two retired deepwater oil rigs to convert them into floating launch and landing platforms for the Starship rocket system. The platforms, stationed in the Gulf of Mexico near Boca Chica, Texas, would have enabled rapid launch cadence and flights from optimal locations. Although the project was temporarily canceled in February 2023 because SpaceX was first focused on gaining flight experience with Starship before pursuing sea-based solutions, in October of the same year, they brought the project back from the dead. At the 2023 IAC International Astronautical Congress, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said, So we may end up doing uh, platform-based launches from a specially designed sort of ocean-going platform. But we, we, we will need to do a lot of launches. I mean, we're talking about thousands of launches per year. Clearly, offshore platforms are still of interest for achieving extremely high flight speeds in the future, and they also show many benefits. First, landing on a drone ship will help Super Heavy become more flexible in landing. SpaceX can land Starship anywhere they want, as long as it does not affect other activities in the ocean. This would create a system that had serious utility and wouldn't need to be limited to civilian use. It would be good for the military, good for instant disaster relief, and good for cargo and passengers, and you could have fleets of such ships offshore all over the planet and change them out for maintenance and so forth. Remember, oceans cover a total of 71% of the Earth's surface, so nothing would be better if there were available locations for launching and landing a starship anywhere in the world. This is useful for starship suborbital missions, which require transporting large numbers of people and cargo over great distances in short periods. Second, thanks to this new method, the payload that SpaceX's rockets can put in orbit will be increased. To land back on land near the launch site requires a longish three-engine boost back burn that uses a few tons of propellant. Those tons of propellant reduce the payload to orbit by about 20% of their mass. Some customer payloads are light enough that they have fuel for landing near the launch site. When SpaceX are launching Starlink satellites, they want to put up as many as possible, so they always do a drone ship landing. Economically, having enough fuel to make that return to the land would be wasted money, not just that fuel itself, but the fuel to carry that fuel up in the first place. So the barge in the ocean is an economic issue. It's far cheaper to bring the rocket back to Starbase on a ship than to fly it back with fuel. So they can load only as much fuel as they will need to deliver the payload and then mostly fall and glide for a powered landing on the barge. 
Next, landing powerful rockets offshore significantly reduces the risks associated with unexpected incidents. Landing a rocket is dangerous. If things go wrong, a large fireball explosion happens, so landing in the middle of the ocean minimizes the risk compared to using the launch pad with launch facilities and personnel nearby. The ocean-going platform will be necessary when SpaceX increases the Starship launch schedule to large frequencies in the future, like over thousands of launches per year as Elon Musk previously mentioned. Drone ships will be extremely important to share that huge workload. Thanks to that, SpaceX can confidently launch many starships to serve important missions like landing on the moon or building self-sufficient cities on Mars. Not only faster, but they will also help reduce flight costs greatly, possibly to only $1 to $2 million as Elon Musk's goal. That will be extremely important for future missions that could be extremely expensive. However, there is a truth that in rocketry, any innovation is likely to be accompanied by several challenges. Take for example in Starship's case, SpaceX tends to integrate Starship launch and landing sites into one location. So if they wanted to land the Super Heavy on a drone ship, this would mean having to simultaneously build a complete launch pad at sea. Obviously, sea launch platforms require a relatively complex logistical process, especially for newly introduced vehicles. Operating from an offshore platform would require everything the rocket needs to launch and land including the people, the payload, the fuel, and so forth, to go through an extra step of being shipped out to the rocket first. Transferring things to a ship across a distance and then unloading them is not a fast process. Also, unless the company were also building giant maintenance facilities offshore that could handle the full process needed to re-ready a rocket for launch, they would also need to ship each rocket itself back and forth from offshore to the mainland for that process. Secondly, unlike Falcon 9, Super Heavy is much different in size, mass, thrust, and design. Thus, SpaceX still needs to make adjustments if they choose this method to land the Super Heavy booster. They would create larger, more stable drone ships or design dedicated structures to keep the booster. In short, applying this method still entails many changes and requires SpaceX to consider carefully before deciding. Anyway, it will be interesting to see the Super Heavy land on the drone ship, and based on the overwhelming benefits of this approach, I'm pretty sure SpaceX will soon kick off the construction and testing of an offshore platform. If successful, it will greatly support the company's ambitious missions in the future. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.